Hey guys, we are here at Gen Con 2016 at the Fantasy Flight Games demo section. I'm here with Chad. Chad, how's it going, man? Doing just fine yourself. Chad apparently has been giving some incredible demos, and we're here with Mansions of Madness second edition. So first things first, a lot of our people out there probably haven't even played Mansions of Madness. So pitch us on the game. What is this game all about? Uh, so Mansions of Madness is a, uh, at least first edition, was a game where you and your friends would go through a Lovecraftian themed mansion and try to figure out the horror and terror of what's going Sounds on there. Sounds great, right? Uh, the thing with first edition was that everything was done clerically by the players, uh, including the overlord character, which was called the Keeper, who was in charge okay. of all the monsters, the plots, and making everything so go. So kind of like a descent kind of idea. You have one kind of. person playing like the meanies, and then everyone's trying to beat that. Exactly. Now, uh, the game worked really well, but it was, you know, like a, at least in my experience, about a 30 or 40 minute setup. It worked when you got into it, but it took a while to get there. Wow. Um, good game. It just didn't hit the tables as often as I wanted it. And then I heard about Mansion Second Edition. Now, Second Edition takes the Keeper and makes it an application. Uh, the application deals with all of the random effects. It deals with the board setup, what items show up, where it all goes, all right here. All right, and so this is a this is a concept that you guys have been exploring with some other games. Like said, XCOM came in with the with yep. the app based thing, and it's going to basically remove a lot of the uh, clunkiness, I would say, of of figuring all this stuff out and letting the machines do it instead. Yep. All okay. right. The great thing about this is if you have a lot of first edition stuff, like I've got all of the the box stuff for uh, first edition uh, mansions, you can go in and you can actually tell it that you have all of that stuff. Okay. And it, then you can use the uh, the Mansion 2nd Edition comes with a, uh, a conversion kit for all of the investigators, monsters, and tiles from the 1st Edition stuff. So you can use all of that stuff if you have it. If you, you know, if you have just the 2nd Edition box, the game is perfectly playable and there's a lot of variety already there. Beautiful. But if you have the 1st Edition stuff, it just makes it more compounding. Makes sense. So we're going to start a scenario. We're going to pick the you know, first basic scenario, which is Cycles of Eternity. It goes for about 60 to 90 minutes, but we're just going to abbreviate that a little bit. I notice you can set the difficulty. Uh, no, it just tells you the difficulty. It tells you the difficulty, okay. So, uh, Cycles uh, is a uh, two out of five difficulty. We've got Escape from Innsmouth, which is four out of five difficulty. Ooh. That one's intense. You're constantly being harassed by uh, the locals of Innsmouth. Uh, we've got Shattered Bonds, which is uh, a little bit longer. It's another Mansion Explorer one, trying to put the pendant back together to seal away an ancient evil that was released. And then Rising Tide, which when it says 240 to 360 minutes, wow. it is not kidding. It's a lot of fun. You get, it's a multi-day exploration. Uh, there are multiple days in game where you get to do a different map each day in wow. game. Uh, and it recommends you have a, your device hooked up so it doesn't run out of battery. But That's very is, nice. <laughs> this uses the uh, save and come back to later feature as well. Excellent. So we're going to be doing Cycles of Eternity. We select our investigators. Uh, Mansion 2nd Edition comes with uh, eight investigators that you can choose from. We have uh, four new ones that are new entirely to the uh, Arkham Horror Mythos. It's the first time in a long time, as far as I'm aware, that Fantasy Flight's made new ones. We've got uh, Agatha Crane, the parapsychologist. Uh, Preston Fairmont, the millionaire. Carlson Sinclair, the uh, butler, and Father Matteo, the uh, priest. But we also have some of the old standards of Wendy Adams, the street urchin, uh, William York, the grave digger, Rita Young, the athlete, and Min Tai Pan, the secretary. Classic. Do you guys have any choices? Uh, you can pick at random. The, the backstories are on the back right. if you guys want to know. Pulling it out. Do, 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 do. Very cool. Oh, my name is Agatha. Okay, do you want to pick one or do random as well? I want to be that, that butler. The butler? Uh, Carlson yes. Sinclair. Yes, we can. Classic. Okay, so, like first edition, there's plastic for everything. All right. And you're Agatha, who has, I think, the best pose. Yes. yes. Beautiful. Completely beautiful. Okay. So, you tell the game what you picked, and we move on from there. Uh, it tells us what our random starting items are. So, we get a fire extinguisher, holy water, Pocket watch, whiskey, and a flesh ward. So we're gonna grab the flesh ward from over here. Um, whiskey, pocket watch, fire extinguisher already here. Nope, I got back in here. 
So I usually keep the deck uh, alphabetized so that it's just easy to find things. This is quite a uh, quite a backpack full of items here. There's a lot of yes. everything that's important. Uh, Got some gear. Holy water. Holy water. So amongst these five things, we get to split them up. You guys can split them up amongst your guys' uh, players as you'd like. I would recommend someone with at least four uh, lore have the spell. Five's even better. Three is bare minimum. Where's the spell? Spell on. Flesh Ward. Heals people with damage taken. I'm a drinker. Yeah. The great thing about the whiskey is after you use it, it becomes a weapon. Yeah. <laughs> Two for one. Yeah, exactly. I've been to that party before. All right, Pocket Watch, who wants it? Pocket Watch helps with puzzles. I'll take it. Fire extinguisher. Additionally, everybody gets two clues to start with. Uh, that depends on the scenario that you're playing. Yo. All right, two clues. Nice. OK, once everything is done, we move on to uh, the scenario. Because we're using this uh, computer setup here, uh, we're gonna have to. It's it's stuck onto this little stand. I would personally prefer having like my tablet or mobile device right. being able to pass it around like a card. Right. We're gonna work with what we have. It here. kind of acts like a, a person over there, you know, that we can bit. we can hang out with. I like yeah. it. Um, it's kind of a Wally situation. Yeah, <laughs> I suppose. Wow. Uh, we also don't have the sound on for this. So uh, normally this game would have you know sound effects, ambient music. There's uh, intro and outro narration. Um, which sadly we will not get. If you'd like, I can read, or if one of you guys would like to read it, I'll read it. Okay. You slumped into your office chair after another long day of interviews. You have been investigating the disappearances surrounding a wealthy neighborhood for two weeks, but you have nothing to show for it. The telephone rings. You answer and hear the panicked voice of an older man. Is this the investigator who visited the Vanderbilt estate? You flip through the files on your desk. William Vanderbilt, a wealthy bachelor, mother recently deceased. He had refused to meet with you, but you were able to speak to several members of his serving staff. This is Eugene, Mr. Vanderbilt's butler. I did not know who else to call. The police think I'm crazy. Unnatural things have started happening here. It's a classic story, really. <laughs> I am worried for my master. I think he is in danger. Please help. Finally, a lead. You hang up the phone, throw on your coat, and leave for the Vanderbilt estate. Well, at least we're going to check it out. Nice. Yep. It's right in front of the construction So there are, we're going to start setting up the map as it goes. The. Uh, for each scenario, there's a couple different ways that the map will show out. At this, for this scenario, I can think of three or four ways easy that this map uh, has. Just the starting tiles are... Uh, and so there's a random the element to this, right? Yes. So the replay value, even of the same scenario, is going to be there. Yes. Uh, things might be like similar in theme that you're going to find. Like, okay, I've played this uh, with the first edition stuff. I don't know which one, it, which where, where the line exactly is, but I've played this where it's been uh, like Yog themed, Cthulhu themed, uh, Shub themed, nice. all the various ancient ones to your liking. Nice. I fought the Dumber Chore, it's not fun. <laughs> your car rattles up the uneven drive, pulling to a stop in front of the estate. Several cars and carriages are parked along the drive. However, the butler who contacted you is nowhere to be seen. You knock on the large oak door with no response. Fearing something that has happened, you try the handle and the door swings open to a lavish entryway. Place the tiles and whatnot as indicated. Uh, this here blocks off the wall. There's no hidden door or anything. It's just the wall is continuous for the map to make sense each time. All right. Uh, you step into the warmth of the house. A strange stillness hangs in the air, and your footsteps echo through the quiet entrance. Place your investigators in this space. Done. Look at this bunch. On the left wall of the entry hall sits a table with a small pile of papers. Place a search token. You guys are pretty showy. Yeah, we are very showy. You're, you're coming in pretty subtly. Is <laughs> the butler. A mysterious painting of a nighttime landscape dominates the right wall of the entry. So, the, and, and just so you guys, the, the app here is, is showing us how to set this up. It's placing the tokens, it's showing the thing. So it's really interesting to see the fusion happen here as we're the, building the map. The app is aware of where all the tokens are, but the app is not aware where we are. Right. Okay? Uh, right. Once the monster spawns or an item is placed, it the app no longer notes it on its map. So that's right. all done on the board. Uh, the silence is broken by the muffled sounds, shouts and sounds of crashing pots and pans coming from the door to your right. Place an explore token. All right. Sounds are, uh, it's great, you can click on this later and it's like, is that hissing? Do I hear hissing? Uh, you notice the shelf stacked with books and other objects nearby. Putting in front of the door could prevent someone or something from coming through. There's a barricade we get to work with. There is, uh, the hall continues around the corner, place a site token. And there are three other doors. So now that we have a board, I can start kind of explaining how this works. First phase is the investigator phase. Uh, during this phase, all the investigators can take their turn in any order that they'd like. Okay. okay. So, you know, it could be 
just down the row one time, the other way, bounce around, doesn't matter, from round to round. Right. Uh, however, once you start your turn, you finish your turn uh, before somebody else gets to take their turn. Yeah, makes sense. Okay. On your turn, you get two actions. Uh, the standard action that you're going to be doing is movement action, where you take a movement action, get two movement points. Uh, these can be used any time during your turn. Nice. Uh, I'll point out on this tile that there's a little white line separating these that's hard to see, but usually it's fairly obvious to see the, uh, the line distinctions. For example, on this tile, there's the yellow between the rooms and then the white between the sections. Right, right, right. Um, you get two moving points. You can use it whenever you'd like. So let's say I was the butler here. I could move one space, look at this, which would be an action, and then move on. Totally fine. Okay. Uh, some people have component actions. I will direct us to Father Mateo's sheet over here, who has an action. Another investigator within range becomes focused. Uh, activate this ability only once per round. Okay. A blessing. Uh, this is an important phrase, uh, within range. It denotes three spaces, not blocked by doors or walls. Okay? Right. Okay. So if you're at the end of the hall, you can still bless Agatha at the end of the hall. However, if Agatha was through this door, can't bless her, she's not within range. Classic. Okay. Focus is a condition over here. Uh, the focus condition, uh, if somebody has the focus condition, they can discard it to turn all of their magnifying glasses to stars. Why is that important? Well, the majority of the game will be making checks. Each of your people has a, uh, has a set of stats. These are strength, agility, observation, lore, influence, and will. Uh, I've taught this game and uh, as well as Eldritch Horror, which has the same emblems more or less. They've added agility for this one. Right. So I, I might accidentally refer to them as muscles, wings, eyes, read a book, shake hands, and haircut. I'm personally a fan <laughs> of haircut. <laughs> it, it makes the game less terrifying for people who not like horror games. Truly. Okay, so like let's say Father Mateo needed to make a will check. He would take five dice, because that's his will, roll, and hope to get successes. Uh, two successes here. This is mostly built on a two success system, so two successes will get you through most anything. Okay. Uh, some things are super hard and need three, some things are easy and only need one, it depends on the thing, and they're also scalar, where it's more equals better. Right, okay. Uh, let's say Father Mateo had rolled this uh, for his strength check, which is three. Again, two is preferred, so he can spend a clue to convert one die to a, uh, from a magnifying glass to a uh, success. If he had two, he would spend two to, to convert both of them, he could also just spend one. Nice. If you're focused, which is again what you can make other people be, you can just make all of the magnifying all glasses stars. Beautiful. So that's a, that's quite an advantage. That that guarantees success in a pretty real way. Yes. Um, there are no guarantees with dice. No, there are no guarantees. Blanks, blanks are terrible. Blanks. Okay. Uh, but otherwise, you can interact with this app at any time. You can just look at what these tokens are. So like, I forgot what this token is. Click. A disheveled pile of paper sits on the table. Nice. So if you're playing like that really long one or like half an hour from now, I don't remember what that was. You can look at it. This is does, this is public. Does not cost you any actions. However, if you wanted to search it, if you notice there's the circle with the arrow through it, that is going to cost you an action. Okay, and you have to be on the space to uh, to search it or on a space to spend the action to explore. This line of sight here, if you're just on this space, you can reveal this for free because it's just line of sight. Um, this is not really used in this scenario, but it's much used in uh, other scenarios. Nice. Okay. okay. That is the game in a uh, quick nutshell. There's, you know, spell effects, there's puzzles to find, monsters to fight. Let's play but around, shall we? So, I'll so let here's, you guys explore. Here's, yeah. here's, the, uh, here's the question. What is it that we're exactly trying to accomplish in here? Well, if you click on the book, your current objective is labeled. The butler who contacted you is nowhere to be seen. Something here isn't right. So we might want to be trying to, we're trying to find the butler, right? Yeah. But For you can now. ignore the butler too. You can just explore. Yeah, sure. We can we can check it out. We're investigating. So exactly. Let me just let me just kick this off. How many actions do I get? Two. Two actions. I I want to look at what this is. Okay. So we go here. Search. What do we get? All right, we're searching it. The papers stacked on the table are invitations marked with today's date. The stars have come round to their position in the cycle of eternity. The Vanderbilt Astronomy Association quarterly invites you to a celebratory evening. Gain one clue. Then huh. discard the search token. Don't mind if I do. What? Uh, invitations. Okay. All right, and then what does this token mean? Uh, that token is an explore token, so if you'd like to Yourselves. see what room is on the other side, a ruckus can be heard on the other side of this door, shouting, the crash of pots and pan. Is that hissing? I gotta explore. I gotta explore that. Explore. Okay, so the door swings open to reveal a dining room in chaos. An aging man in a tailcoat scrambles through a serving window into the kitchen as he tries to escape a strange black creature writhing in the dining room table. Discard this explore token and place the dining room. So we get rid of this. Nice. I have this conveniently already right here. Beautiful. Okay. Looks good. It's good looking tile. Next. Yeah, hey. yeah, the art's beautiful. Uh, 
the creature turns to face you, its black serpentine body shifts and changes, playing tricks on your eyes as you try to focus on it. The creature unfurls its leathery wings and unleashes a blood-curdling screech. We spawn a hunting horror. Kill it, kill it. No, okay. no. Blockade it, barricade it. Right, then you suffer two horror. Okay. Horror. With a will to negate. What's a horror? Alright, so I've got okay. will of five. Horror is sanity damage. Damage is physical damage. Okay, so I'm looking for, I suffer two, so if I roll two successes, then I both. negate it all. If you roll one, you negate one, so there can be partial. Ooh, ooh, two guys. successes. Totally fine. Whoop, whoop. Okay. <laughs> I have a question. <laughs> yep. What's on the bottom of this? Uh, bottom of this is f uh, flavor text to describe the monster, as well as any special abilities, like this is a flying monster, so if it was outdoors, it could ignore certain things. Um, also, it has the strength value of the monster, which is used when trying to break through barricades. Nice. All right. So it lets us know. Um, Excellent. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so those was, are my two actions. So I then pass over to uh, one of totally these guys. Your turn's not totally done yet. Okay. We have the knife, which is placed. With your, your exploration is not over yet. Uh, there, wow. In the center of the dining table, a carving knife sits embedded in a roast. You can pick it up as an action. Uh, a china cabinet stands against the wall, though it looks to have been repurposed uh, for all manner of knickknacks. That's right here. You see a kitchen through the serving window. Most of the cabinets are ajar to the food preparation, but one has been left locked shut uh, with chains catches your attention. Yeah, yeah. It catches my attention indeed. Uh, in the kitchen, you also see that someone has left the refrigerator open. Water leaks out into a puddle on the floor. Wow. <laughs> After everything's been revealed, oh, I'm sorry, one last thing. We have Eugene, the butler. Uh, you spot the old man you saw climbing through the serving window, huddling in the corner behind the oven. <laughs> Sweat beads off his brow and his eyes bulge in terror. It's a per okay. This is Eugene, the butler. Mission accomplished, let's go. Once everything has been revealed, <laughs> uh, the game says you may now move one space and no, explore no way. as part of your... Okay, you're, no you're way. good. Uh, no way. Look at this thing. Uh, I'm not moving uh, in there. Now, it's crazy. It's a snake with wings. What are you now, about here? Dude, where's your uh, hero, Gene? I believe the butler gets to go still. Yes. Okay. You could, if you want to, spend an action to put this barricade in front of the door to prevent I think, the hunting horror. I, I definitely want to. Okay. Yeah. That's one action. Woo. When do I get to go? Next. But I want to go in the room. <laughs> it's too late. Too late, barricade. We've made the call, Zach. We've made the call. I work okay. for the priest. Um, <laughs> and I want to check that out. Uh, you can't check out that this turn because oh, I have to move you have to move, and then that would be two, a, an additional action over what you can normally and do. What get in you can what? give somebody else an action uh -huh. because you are the butler. Okay, far out. Uh, uh, you're here to serve. I'll give little Agatha, eager Agatha over here. Okay, I'm gonna move. okay you're going to move here, okay, and then you have your normal turn. Okay. Get to exploring, Zach. Okay, I'm going to move over this. Just kidding. I'm gonna you could remove the barricade as an action. Just kidding. Now you're gonna look at the painting. Don't do it. That'd be so funny. Go yeah, a mysterious it. painting of landscape under the night sky overlooks the entry. Search. Shadowy figures can be seen amidst the landscape. However, something in the stars catches your interest. This is Scalar. I don't know how many you need to succeed. Just the more you have, the better. Pump it. So you're yeah, gonna be testing it. It, your it, uh, it. lore. How do I pump it? How do I pump? We don't know. Oh, you don't know. Oh, we were just. Uh, no, very, what's your lore? Is, is unknown. Read we the books. We were just excited about it. Yeah, yeah. sorry. I got you. I thought you meant I could like. Yeah, I thought. Yeah, that's that what I actually thought. <laughs> that was incorrect. You Not have two. one success. Oh, sorry, two successes. S spin that. Spin you that. You can spend a clue. Spin it. Spin it. Two successes. One, two, three. And then you enter that in the app, and then it gives you something. Yep. Uh, there's what a snar There's a specific thing I can think about in this scenario where you're trying to rip something off of a door. If you get one success, you get the item, but you wound yourself uh, with the splinters off of the uh, the wood. If you get two successes, you pass and you're not injured. Wow, so it doesn't cool. matter how much you get. Cool. You identify several of the specks of light in the sky as planets. They are all occupying the same section of the sky as if coming into alignment. Not unlike the planets in the sky tonight. Beneath the painting, a plaque reads, In memory of Lilith Vanderbilt. Gain two clues and discard the search token. Oh, two clues, nice. Two clues. One for two, it's a classic trade. Okay. Yeah. The door leads to a large front room of the mansion. Let's do it. Explore. Need to relax. Either. Now we need, if you'd like to read that. You swing the door open into the warmly lit lounge. It looks very nice, by the way. Large plush chairs and sofas decorate the lavish sitting room, and a small bar stocked with bootleg liquor is tucked into the corner next to the east door. It is prohibition. Place the lounge tile as indicated and discard any explorer tokens leading to it. And then you get to just relax in this room for the rest of the game, I'm sure. It's <laughs> look, look, look at Behind the bar, a large chest catch, uh, catches your eye. Place a search token. 
A large wooden table stands against the wall beneath a portrait of a stern-looking man. Places are joking. Uh, I don't like that. Those eyes are going to be moving. A small wooden desk stacked with books and other items stands against one wall. Amongst the items, you spot something useful. Place the kerosene lantern common item. Ah, something useful. You're going to want it. Interesting. The implication of it being useful is interesting. Shall we burn this house this evening? We need the light source. Right there. All right. Man, we are so observant when we open doors. Yeah. I know. It's wild. It's and the door to the other side you can explore through. You may move one space into the explored area. Yeah. You got to do that, right? There's nothing terrifying in here unless you're scared of monsters. No, it's just couches. Yeah. It's, just it's fine. Do you know how confused you work? You might find some loose Oh, it's fine. Right. Everything's well, cool. if I get lost in there and away from you guys and I die, it's your fault. That's fair. That's fair. Continue. You're all done. All right. So we press the uh, arrow here to end the investigator phase and go to the mythos phase, which has a lovely red handprint on it. When this happens, I sometimes high five people. Cool. We did. <laughs> uh, this is when the game punches us in the fa face and fights back. Uh, a single beam of light breaks through the clouds, but is quickly choked out. There is no immediate effect. Hey, great. Not bad yet. Then the monsters get to activate. The hunting horror moves three spaces towards the investigator within range with the highest strength. There are no investigators within range because range is three spaces, not through doors uh, and not through walls. Because we made the right call, Zach. I would have been dancing with that. However, <laughs> there are no investigators within range. The creature opens its mouth and breathes in, tasting the air. Catching the scent of prey, the creature shrieks and slithers through the air. The hunting horror moves three spaces towards the nearest investigator, so it's going to attempt to get through the barricade. We look at its strength, it no. which is three, so I'll roll for the monsters. If I get two successes, I break through. Uh -oh. Nah, you're not going to do that. Oh, oh who is it. this guy? So it bursts through and lands in your guys' space, but because it did that as opposed to its initial attack, its turn's done. Alright, you guys have one job. Okay. Wow. <laughs> After all the monsters activate, we do a horror check. Each investigator must resolve a horror check against the monster within range, with the highest horror rating. All horror checks have to be uh, have been resolved to have to move to the next phase. So I'm going to have you two. You're fine. You're in another room. Yeah, just lounging, by the way. So my will is five, so would I roll five dice for this? Uh, it depends on the horror check. Uh, this one will be will-based. Okay. Uh, I've seen observation or lore. There's. It, it depends on what uh, comes up. The creature uh, rattles deep in its throat, then begins to speak in clear, unambiguous words. Unambiguous. The last words of its many victims, one after the other. That's not cool. Suffer three yeah. horror, will negates. You suffer currently one, uh, two damage. I'll make it two. One damage. All right, I'll take one. Okay, and uh, damage is taken face up, unless otherwise specified. So this is take three horror, face up. You found a minor shock, resolved immediately, no additional effects. Not a big deal. But you keep the card. Not a big deal. I need you to make a, a sorry, you sir, to make a three uh, dice. Check. Only so three. Roll well. Roll well and live. You have one, you can make it two. I'm going to. Okay. You suffer also one horror. You have a sudden shock. No! Grasping, so gasping in surprise and fear, you clutch your face, forgetting for a moment what you had been holding only seconds before. You drop two random items and then flip this card face down. Oh, so my whiskey. Oh, now whiskey I know out. you've been drinking okay. whiskey on now, the job, Robert. My, my secret's out. The interesting thing is, sometimes you get damaged face down, and, some, and sometimes your cards come in and then they flip down. Those face down cards may be flipped up later. So no. face down damage might be penalties and worse things down the line. Oh, wow. Gross. Once everybody's done, hit the arrow, continue, and then you guys have Go two actions to apiece, and we keep going through. All right, so let's get down uh, to the kind of the final nuts and bolts of this. Why? The first thing I noticed is that this is one of the most easily most immersive games that I have yet seen, particularly because you know you have a technological element that can just churn out text, and you have to have rule books and pages of all this stuff. Uh, and that's a really cool experience. So is the, is the draw of this game just exploring the world and, and being in the scene? I would argue that it's, it's very much so that. It's great that they can just drop into a situation. Like, I've played this scenario you know, a number of times, and even today while demoing it, it's all of these different things. Like, um, where there's things in different places that I've never seen them before, yeah. or rooms that I hadn't noticed had been you know, placed there. There's a lot of variability to it, even though I know that's okay, it's the Vanderbilt Mansion, and you know, I'm yeah. going to find the hunting horror through the first door. They're, the second monster that appears uh, could be one of many. Wow. So there's a lot of aspects to it, and the fact that it is an investigation. Like in the first mansions, I felt like I was investigating, but I kind of knew where to go based on like the card placement and the setup. Here, it's like I don't know what's around the corner necessarily. Yeah. 
and I've played this game, you know, quite a number of times. Yeah. So that's what I want to ask. Is there anything else that is a significant difference for people who have enjoyed and played first edition? What happens on second edition? Um, so, like, what's because, the difference most significantly? Uh, most significant is that it's less antagonistic. Okay. Uh, a lot of the people who played first edition sit there and go, "The great thing about first edition is that you know you get this immersive experience, but the keeper needs to be, play more narratively. Right. If the keeper focuses in on one player and just targets that person, you can really knock them down. Classic. Yeah. A lot of people like that, but that wasn't really my thing about it. Yeah. Second edition removed that anta antagonistic about it. When Mythos events come up, it's, you know, if you're in this room, uh, it'll pick a random player that it knows is in play at, uh, to have this effect. Right. Uh, it feels a lot more twisty-turvy and more unknown. Right. Or right, mad. Right. Which is exactly what you want in a game like exactly. this. Exactly. All right, man. Well, thank you so much. It's been thank a great you. demo. This is thank Mansions of Madness. Thank you. Thank second you. edition from Gen Con 2016. Stick with us, guys. we got more coming from the con.